Tonight, I'm inside the Ecuadorian embassy talking to Julian Assange, who's been cooped up here for almost six months. While he's been here, though, he hasn't been sitting idle. He's written a new book called Cypherpunks, Freedom and the Future of the Internet. It's actually based on one of the shows that he made for RT. Now, uh, Julian, you're saying basically in your book that the internet can enslave us, but the internet's just a thing, right? It, it's a soulless uh, a piece of equipment. Who are the real enslavers? The, the people who control the interception of the internet and to some degree also physically control the big data warehouses and the international fiber optic lines. So we all think of the internet as some kind of platonic realm where we can throw our ideas and communications and web pages and books and they exist somewhere out there. Actually they exist on um, web servers in New York or Nairobi or in Beijing and the information comes to us through uh, satellite connections or through fiber optic cables. So whoever physically controls this controls the realm of our ideas and communications. And whoever is able to uh, sit on those communications channels can intercept entire nations. Uh, and that's the new game in town as far as state spying is concerned, intercepting entire nations, not individuals. And you're, this sounds like a kind of futuristic scenario, but you're saying that the future is already here. Yeah, I mean, the United States National Security Agency has been doing this for some 30, 20 years, uh, but now it's spread to even mid-sized nations. Even uh, Gaddafi's Libya was employing uh, the Eagle system, which is produced by a French company, Amasis, um, pushed there in 2009, advertised in its internal documentation as nationwide interception system. So, so what's happened over the last uh, 10 years is a uh, every decreasing costs of intercepting each individual now to the degree where it's cheaper to intercept every individual uh, than it is to pick particular people to spy upon. And what's the, what's the alternative, the sort of utopian alternative that you would put forward? So the utopian alternative is to try and gain independence for, this, for the internet for it to sort of declare independence versus the rest of the world. And that's really quite important because if you think about what is human civilization that makes it quintessentially human and civilized, it is our shared knowledge about how the world works, how we deal with each other, how we deal with the environment, which institutions are corrupt, which ones are good, what are the, what are the, the least dumb ways of doing things. And that intellectual knowledge is something we're all putting onto the internet. And so if we can try and decouple that um, from um, the brute nature of states uh, and their cronies, um, then I think we really have hope for a global civilization. If, on the other hand, uh, the mere security guards, you know, the people who control the guns, um, are able to take control of our intellectual life, take control of all the ways in which we communicate to each other, then, of course, you can see how dreadful the outcome will be. Because it won't just happen to one nation, it will happen to every nation at once. It is happening to every nation at once as far as spying is concerned, because now every nation is merging its society with internet infrastructure. And in what way are we as sort of uh, naive internet users, if you like, and I exclude you from that obviously, but kind of willingly collaborating with these collectors of personal data? You know, we all have a Facebook account, we all have telephones which can be tracked. All the time, everyone, nearly everything they do on the internet is permanently recorded. Every web search. Do you know what you were thinking one year, two days, three months ago? Now, you don't know, but Google knows. It remembers the National Security Agency who intercepts the request if it flowed over the US border. It knows. So um, by just communicating